Hey everyone! In my last few videos, I made a Q&A website for coders, and I still work on it from time to time. But in this video, I decided to switch topics and uh, restart my data structures and algorithms series. Now, in a previous video, which I published a long time ago, we learned the linked list data structure. It looked like this one, where we had a bunch of nodes that are connected to each other in a single direction. And each node in the structure had a class like this. Uh, it's called node, and it has two attributes, uh, integer data, and next, which is also a node. Now, a tree is a similar data structure uh, to a linked list. And the only difference is that in a linked list, each node can only link to one other node. But in a tree, each node can link to multiple other nodes. So here's one example of a tree. As you can see, uh, each node here is linking to multiple nodes. Here, uh, each node is linking to at least three other nodes. And so uh, for this particular structure, the class of each node might look like this one. Uh, as you can see, this one is called node again, and it has four attributes, uh, integer data, just like before. Sometimes uh, this one is called value, but we're calling data here. And we have three children. Uh, all of them are nodes. And so for example, uh, if you look at this particular node here, the three children are set to these three other nodes. And if you look at uh, this node right here, this one has only two children, this one and this one. So if you want to express that in code, you can just set uh, the two of the children to those nodes and the last child to null or none uh, to show that it doesn't exist. And if you look at this node, it doesn't have any children. So you can set all of these uh, children nodes to null or none, depending on the language uh, that you're using. Now let's take a look at another example of a tree. So this one is drawn from uh, top to bottom instead of left to right, but it has the same kind of structure. The more important difference is that each node has a most two children here. So the class of each node might look like this one instead. As you can see, we have integer data just like before. Uh, but now we have only two children, which we're calling left and right. And just like this, when a tree has uh, a most two children, it's called a binary tree. Now to help you understand what a tree is exactly, we're going to call uh, this little game called Is This a Tree? Uh, basically, I'm going to show you a structure. Uh, you just need to answer if it's a tree or not. So let me start with this one. This one uh, doesn't have integers inside them. Uh, it, instead, it has strings. But of course, it's still a tree. And what about this one? Well, it's a linked list, but it's also a tree. And the way I think about it is that each node could have uh, multiple children, just like that. But it just doesn't. So it's kind of a boring example, but technically speaking, it's also a tree. And what about this one? Well, it might look like a tree, but it's not. Because one constraint of something being a tree is that there are no two references uh, that link to the same node. And these two references uh, violate that condition. And what about this last one? Well, again, uh, it violates uh, the definition of being something being a tree for the same reason. These two references uh, point to the same node. So it's not a tree. And another way to see that this is not a tree is that uh, it has a cycle here. And whenever there's a cycle, um, that's not a tree. So you might say, well, what is a tree exactly then? Well, a tree is a structure in which there are uh, nodes that are connected to each other. And there's a way to uh, go from the root node to every other node in the structure. So the root node uh, in this particular tree is this one. And there's a way uh, for us to get to every other node from the root node in this structure. And it's the same thing uh, with this tree or this linked list. There's this root node and there's a way to get to 
uh, every other node from the root node. But as soon as there are two references in this structure that refer to the same node, uh, for example, this one, then it's not a tree anymore. So that's basically what a tree is. And by the way, the root node of a tree is a node without any parents. So what that means is that uh, whatever the root node is, no other node refers to that one. OK, now that you hopefully have a clear idea of what a tree is, let's practice using a tree with this problem. You're given a tree, for example, this one, uh, with the root being here. And this is a binary tree. So the class uh, of each node will look like this. It has an integer of data, and it has two uh, children, left and right. And the problem is uh, writing a function, which we're going to call find sum, which takes uh, the root of this tree as the input and returns the sum of all the values within this tree. So if you're given this particular root, uh, you want to be able to return 20 from this function because we have 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4, which is 20. And try solving this problem uh, in O of n in time, where n is the number of nodes in this tree. OK, and here's my solution. And by the way, if you want to try running uh, my solution in either Python or Java, you can find that uh, at this URL, csdojo.io slash tree. Uh, like I said before, we're calling this function find sum, and it's taking uh, the root of whatever uh, tree that you're given. And we're going to implement uh, this function recursively here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define the base case and that's going to be when uh, the given root is null or none, uh, which is that the given root is just an empty tree. For example, this empty tree right here. Then uh, the sum of all the values in this empty tree is, of course, 0. So we want to return 0 in that case. And otherwise, uh, for example, if we're given this root right here in this recursive function, then uh, the sum of all the nodes in this tree is uh, the sum of this current value plus the sum of all the nodes in the right subtree and the sum of all the nodes in the left subtree. Uh, we can express that with this one line here. Uh, we're returning the current value or root dot data plus the sum of uh, all the nodes in the left subtree. So that's find sum of root dot left and the sum of all the nodes in the right subtree. So that's find sum of root dot right. And this function would only take O of n in time to execute, uh, where n is the number of nodes in the given tree. And uh, let's think about why. Well, first, we need to count the number of times this function is going to be called. And that's going to be the number of nodes in the given tree, because for each node, uh, this function is going to be called once, plus all the empty nodes, or these empty trees uh, that I didn't draw earlier in this representation of the tree. And so this function is going to be called at most about 2n times, or o of 2n times, which is the same thing as o of n times. And so this function is going to be called o of n times. And each time uh, this function is called, uh, let's think about how, how much time it takes to execute. Well, if you look at each line, uh, if you look at this line, it only takes a constant amount of time, or o of 1, because we're simply checking uh, this simple if condition. And it's the same thing as uh, this line. It only takes O of 1 in time, returning 0. And this line as well. Uh, we're simply adding up these three numbers. So once we have the results for these two recursive calls, uh, adding up these three numbers would only take O of 1 in time, or a constant amount of time. And so each time this function is called, it only takes O of 1, and it's called uh, O of n times. So multiplying them together, 
uh, we get the total amount of time uh, this function takes to execute, or the time complexity of this function, and that's going to be of n. Now that's it for this problem and my introduction to trees. But if you need more practice using trees, uh, there's another interesting problem that I think is much harder. And it's a problem I talked about a while ago as a coding interview question. So I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below. Anyway, thank you as always for watching my videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.